Good morning, welcome to Core Finance. I'm Matt Brown. I am joined by Connor Campbell, who is an analyst, financial analyst at SpreadX. And this is the first of three videos. We're going to look at the pound. Up she went. Down she comes. <laughs> is this gravity? Is this a strong dollar, a weak pound? What, what's the story here? Yeah, no, it, it was doing so well in September mm. and then, you know, obviously it was trickling low and then last Friday sort of ended on an incredibly sour note. Bought over that negativity at the start of October, really got off to the worst possible start to the new month and the new quarter, really. Mm. Um, you know, it is, I think, part of it is going to be down to the, the dollar received a few, you know, key boost last week being a very hawkish Janet Yellen and then Trump's tax plan. Even though the dollar wasn't completely won over by Trump's tax plan, it was enough to, mm -hmm. uh, against what had been a slightly softened up pound to, you know, take some serious change off, the, off of the currency. This week again, yesterday you had that weak um, manufacturing PMI, that dragged it lower, compared to, especially compared to a, the strength in the Eurozone and, you know, the, US, the USA's uh, uh, manufacturing PMI mm -hmm. is also very strong. I think, you know, those PMI is going to remain sort of the focus throughout the week. You know, on Wednesday, you've got the services PMI, arguably the most important of the three PMIs. Yep. I think that's expected to nudge a tad higher. But again, the PMI sort of uh, forecasts don't tend to be the most accurate readings. So we'll see on Wednesday which way that lands. Then you've also got, you know, the market and ISM US ones on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Which way those go is really going to dictate how, how the pound moves, I think, in the, in the you know, middle of the week. You've got a Yellen speech on Wednesday. If she's as hawkish as she was last week, then last week, sorry, then that's another boost for the dollar. Then you've got non-farm on Friday. I think the non-farm figure itself is meant to be pretty weak. You know, you've got the impact of the hurricanes. Yep. So I think that's going to leave it uh, below 100k, which, you know, those kinds of figures tend to be rare in the last Wait, few wage years. Wage earnings growth is, yeah. is key. For yeah, wage, wage growth. I think that's expected to jump from, I think, 0.1% to 0.3%. That will be, I think, the non-farm dip is expected. So I don't mm. think too much attention will be paid to that. That wage growth, however, you know, that it's been sort of stubbornly low in the last couple of months and that jumped to 0.3 percent it's not amazing but it is progress and i think yep. given how hawkish the fed seems at the moment it's not going to take a lot to tip them further towards that direction so there is there's a lot of there are a lot of things sort of pointed to a dollar strong week uh, in the next couple of days however our clients have been buying around uh, just below that 133 mark mm -hmm. i think key level yeah it's been falling quite a while you know it's and there is plenty of room just to climb a bit back, you know, just to the 1.335 mark, really, and just hold around that level. And I think that's what our clients are looking for in the rest of the week. Yeah, hopefully a bit of resistance around that 133 because, uh, well, it's got a lot to give back <laughs> if we, uh, we have a strong dollar. So certainly one to look out for this week with uh, all the news flow coming from the US. Connor, thank you very much for joining us.